Known as the Tyran virus and abbreviated as T-virus, it is the designation given to a series of mutant progenitor virus strains developed by the Umbrella Corporation. The virus is kept submerged in a vial of either green or blue liquid depending on the depiction. Its purpose was to create bioorganic weapons, or BOWs for short, mutated creatures designed to serve as living weapons. The T-Virus The primary goal of the T-Virus project was to effectively replace the need for a large-scale conventional army. This was to be achieved by engineering a mutagenic virus which could be used to create super soldiers, enhanced beings superior to a traditional human in every way. A naturally occurring virus named Progenitor, which occurs under very specific conditions, was to be used as a base for Umbrella's series of viruses. It was discovered in the Kajuju region of West Africa. The progenitor virus was special in the extent it was able to cause mutations and how it could affect any organism, whether animal, plant, fungal or bacterial. The T-virus would mutate a specimen on a cellular level, turning them into a number of bioorganic weapons or BOWs. Once it enters the bloodstream, the T-viruses make contact with the cell's membrane and insert their genetic coding into it. The cell then absorbs the viral genome into its own, which hijacks the cell's intended functions, using them to replicate itself. They are then released from the host cell and infect the neighbouring cells, which starts the process over again. Several diseases have been linked to T-Virus. The first, which can be tentatively dubbed as progenitor disease, is a fatal viral disease caused by progenitor and early T-Virus strains. Not much is known about progenitor disease, apart from that it will fatally mutate the patient, but there exists a tiny percentage who have a natural immunity to these effects, and it will instead grant them inhuman levels of strength and intelligence. The most common disease caused by direct exposure to later T-viruses, however, is the so-called cannibal disease, a condition where the patient mutates to have enhanced survival capabilities at the expense of brain and tissue damage as well as homicidal and cannibalistic urges. An unusual case of viral infection occurs in the bodies of adapters, wherein they gain superhuman abilities with limited to no brain damage. As the genetic criteria for this unique reaction was rare, an estimate put it at 1 in 10 million. No such human mutants were known to have existed until the 1990s with the Tyrant Project's initial prototype BOWs. A number of others such as Sergei Vladimir and Albert Wesker gained enhanced superhuman abilities following their own T-virus infections, though these were specifically engineered strains designed to near guarantee such mutations. The T-virus is capable of various methods of infection. Research files supplied in the Arclay Laboratory identify the virus as having a protein structure. Due to its importance in bioweapons development, the direct injection of the virus was considered by Umbrella to be the primary means of infection. The raccoon sewage treatment plant was contaminated with the virus, spreading it through the water supply and evidence in the Arclay Laboratory in the Military Training Center indicates the T-Virus was capable of spreading as an airborne pathogen in unspecified laboratory conditions. Whether or not it can spread between individuals through coughing is uncertain, as coughing fits do not appear to be a common symptom. Early signs of T-Virus infection include irritation of the epidermis, with itchiness and blisters forming on the skin, an insatiable appetite and a gradual impairment of the mind. The most noteworthy cases of T-Virus outbreaks occurred in Umbrella's Arclay Laboratory, which spread to the surrounding forest. After multiple missing persons reports and incidents involving cannibalistic murders, the Raccoon Police's Special Unit stars were sent to investigate, most of whom were killed, with the only recorded survivors being officers Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Barry Burton, Rebecca Chambers and Brad Vickers. The encounter was dubbed the Mansion Incident and ended in the destruction of the Arclay Lab and Mansion. 
and a couple of months later in Raccoon City during the Raccoon City incident, contamination from Umbrella's nest laboratory infected the water supply, resulting in the destruction of Raccoon City. Among the survivors were Leon Kennedy, Claire Redfield, Sherry Birkin, Ada Wong, Hunk, Jill Valentine, Carlos Oliveira and Barry Burton. Treatments for T-virus infection exist in the form of antiretroviral therapy, antibodies and vaccination. Some of these treatments are known as antivirus, AT1521 and daylight. New viral strains were developed towards the end of Umbrella's existence and the years following. The G-virus, developed by William Birkin, had much more potent effects and was meant to serve as a replacement for the T-virus. The T plus G virus, a strain which was able to enhance infected bodies with the ability to discharge electricity. T Veronica, created by Dr. Alexia Ashford, under the correct conditions, it allows the host to regain full intellectual capabilities. T Abyss, created after Umbrella, it was made by grafting the genome of another virus onto a T virus strain. T Phobos, engineered by Dr. Alex Wesker to trigger mutations in humans when it came into contact with certain levels of stress hormones. C Virus, a heavily re engineered strain of T Veronica and G, which was most notably used by Neo Umbrella in 2012 for bioterror purposes. History from the progenitor virus's discovery in December 1966, the ultimate goal of Dr. Oswell Spencer and his colleagues Dr. Edward Ashford and Dr. James Marcus was the birthing of a new age of eugenics using mutagenic viruses to improve the human race. To fund this program, dubbed the Wesker Project, it was agreed that strains of the virus should be engineered as a military product, leading to the creation of Umbrella Pharmaceuticals as a front for this research. Research on progenitor strains was conducted simultaneously in different laboratories, with Ashford, Marcus and Spencer all engaging in independent research. T-virus research began in the late 60s, soon after Umbrella was founded, as the T-virus is a series of independently developed strains and not a single virus, new strains do not necessarily rely on recent research by other teams. Spencer's team developed their T-virus prototype at the Arclay Laboratory, where they had already undergone testing of their Type A and Type B progenitor strains. Little is known of Spencer's project, though it would appear Spencer was disappointed in its progress and ordered research data be stolen from his counterparts. Work on this virus was completely abandoned by 1978. Ashford performed research on his T-virus prototype at his family's stately home in Europe. In 1968, Spencer orchestrated an outbreak at the lab, resulting in Ashford dying from infection. Work on the virus was put on hold until the 80s, when Alexia Ashford took charge of the project. The fruit of her labours would ultimately be the T. Veronica virus. Marcus's research reached a breakthrough on the 13th of January 1978, which warranted the official coining of the name T. Virus to divorce the strain from the progenitor virus. Using the virus on humans saw a very different response compared with progenitor infection. Rather than dying, the infected instead became aggressive, were found to have cannibalistic impulses, lost intelligence and suffered from significant necrosis. In 1978, samples and research data were stolen by Dr. William Birkin, a protégé of Marcus's. He had been offered a senior position at the Arclay Laboratory on the sole condition it be delivered to Spencer's team. Immediately upon his transfer in the summer of 1978, Birkin began drawing up plans to modify the virus further. Spencer was, however, unsatisfied with the virus the Arclay team were developing, as approximately 10% of people were resistant. To compensate for this, in 1981, the Arclay team created the Hunter BOW type that would be used to kill these remaining survivors. This virus was mass-produced within Umbrella and supplied to each research facility for new BOW model development. 
In 1988, an Umbrella Security Service team infiltrated Marcus's lab and assassinated him. William Birkin and Albert Wesker accompanied the kill squad and recovered Marcus's research data for their own project at the Arclay Laboratory. In May to July 1998, a sentient research specimen, the Queen Leech, set in motion an eventual containment failure in the Arclay Laboratory. This accident occurred during an experiment by the Tyrant project team, who were undergoing work on the T002 and T011 Tyrant subjects. Epsilon, a newer T-virus strain, was leaked, leading to the mansion incident and destruction of the facility. Concurrently, William Birkin was in talks with the US government to hand over his T and G virus work to them. Once they caught wind of his plans, Umbrella dispatched an Umbrella security service team to recover the samples. Birkin was shot during the raid and infected himself, becoming a violent mutant. When rendezvousing with their backup team at the sewers, Birkin caught up and massacred the squad, leaving all but the mission leader dead and breaking the T-virus vials, which was consumed by rodents and spread to the city's water supply, leading to the Raccoon City incident. In December of the same year, Rockfort Island, an umbrella base and prison, was attacked by Wesker and the T-virus released onto the island. Since Umbrella's bankruptcy, the T-virus found its way into the hands of terrorist groups and used in bioterror attacks across the globe. Zombies Raw exposure to the T-virus will lead to the cannibal disease. Once the host succumbs to its effects, they become a zombie. Their flesh will become necrotic, their vital organs will fail, and their brain activity will almost stop, barring only the simplest functions, and will be driven to seek out living beings and devour them. This can happen to a live infected patient, or a recently deceased body, where the virus will reanimate them. Body processes in zombies are noticeably distinct from uninfected humans. Due to radical changes in the metabolism, the flesh undergoes significant necrosis. Due to their diet, the body of a zombie begins to overproduce stomach acids in order to dissolve the meat quicker. Vomiting of acid, sometimes containing blood, is a typical side effect. A zombie's eyes are covered by a white film of mucus, as the eye is a sensitive membrane and turns almost entirely into mucus when rotting. At a genetic level, zombies mutate to work around conditions that should be fatal to humans. Even when externally showing no symptoms of cannibal disease, a patient can be so considerably altered that they can survive even total shutdown of the respiratory and cardiovascular systems, or the aforementioned apparent brain death. Zombies can endure considerable punishment and are not felled by singular gunshot wounds as humans would be. As a consequence, a zombie's death can only be assured through decapitation, the destruction of the brain itself, or complete incineration. If infected with certain strains of the T-virus, zombies are known to undergo another set of mutations in response to changes in body chemistry. The zombies infected with the Epsilon strain at the Arclay Laboratory were observed to undergo further mutation if incapacitated but not killed by weapons fire. These new mutants, called Crimson Heads, were observed to have an excess adrenaline production, widening the capillaries to give their skin a red hue. This mutation is known as the V-Act process. Zombies encountered in Raccoon City, meanwhile, were observed being altered on a skeletal and muscular level when their bodies responded to the consumption of flesh, resulting in liquors. Necrosis, particularly of the brain, occurs in such significance that zombies lose most of their higher order brain functions. As a result, sensory perception, cognition, motor skills, spatial reasoning, and language are either greatly limited or totally absent. Without human reasoning, zombies rely entirely on basal urges and will aimlessly wander in search of food. In some cases, the mind is not entirely gone, however, as zombies are seen to sometimes show a fixation with wandering around buildings they frequented before infection, and may even return to those locations. 
They can also recognise certain objects and remember their functions, such as doorknobs, and can understand the concept of a person being in another room and pursue them for a short time, even when the line of sight is broken. Zombies are constantly hungry regardless of how much they have eaten. While they can and will kill other people to sustain themselves, zombies will also consume corpses and the bodies of the infected if no other sources of nutrition are available. They may even attempt to consume other zombies. Bioorganic Weapons BOWs are genetically altered organisms created with the intent of either being sold as military slash paramilitary weapons or were created for research purposes. This definition is rigid and does not include mutants created unintentionally due to outbreaks, which are instead regarded as irregular mutants. With the development of the T-Virus entering Phase 3, instead of solely relying on the virus itself being weaponized, Umbrella began creating reliable, intelligent BOWs. Its counterpart, the Tyrant Project, had at the time determined that it was statistically improbable for any one individual to possess by chance the genetic characteristics to be compatible with the viral strains presently available. For the next several years, the Arclay Laboratory and NEST led global research into the Epsilon strain. This new virus also forced a second set of mutations in zombies, resulting in creatures such as Crimson Heads and Lickers, and others were engineered using the virus as a bonding agent to splice DNA of other different creatures together. Some of the most noteworthy bioweapons created from the T-Virus include the MA39 Cerberus, an early attempt at creating a controllable bioorganic weapon. Dobermans were specifically selected for the project due to their traits favouring military service. They should not be confused with zombie dogs, which encompasses all dog breeds infected with any T-Virus strain in the secondary form. The MA121 Hunter, human-reptile hybrids made by grafting reptilian donor DNA to a fertilised human embryo with the aid of the T-Virus as a bonding agent. They were designed to find and eliminate humans who survive an initial T-Virus dispersal. They have multiple models, with the original Alpha variant proving to be the most capable all-rounder, but other variants include the Beta and Gamma. The liquor, an irregular mutant resulting from a rare secondary metamorphosis of zombies called V-Act, they have the appearance of a flayed body and are named after their lance-like tongue. Tyrant The main bioweapon to be created by Umbrella, and what the virus is named for, the Tyrant BOW type is created through initially a primary T-virus infection and surgical enhancements to first create it, and then subsequent specimens are cloned from the original, with their intent to be used as super soldiers on the battlefield. Umbrella USA pioneered research on human mutants in their Tyrant project. Tyrants are distinguished from the typical human mutant zombies. Tyrants were intended to be the ultimate bioweapon, and specimens and research outlived Umbrella itself. The initial prototypes were designated as T00. Later versions of the BOW Tyrant include the T103, an improved, mass produced version. T103s possessed greater intelligence than the T00, and could follow orders impossible for more primitive BOWs. T-103 models were used as bodyguards, assassins sent to hunt specific individuals, agents used to acquire important objects, and hard muscle for tackling armed opposition. These tyrants have a more human appearance and were provided with power limiters, which are devices intended to prevent any further mutations. In the event of the limiter being damaged, the BOW would undergo regenerative mutations and rapidly evolve into their so-called super tyrant forms, more closely resembling their earlier prototype T00 series predecessors. The Nemesis T-Type was created by Umbrella Europe's Paris Lab, a T103 with an NE alpha parasite acting as the creature's brain, giving it newer enhanced abilities. 
the nemesis T-type possesses near-human level intelligence, demonstrating rational thinking and self-awareness, allowing it to solve complex tasks on its own, such as greater target tracking and the handling of weaponry in combat. The main weapon of the nemesis was a Stinger rocket launcher. Thanks for watching all the way till the end, give the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more, make sure to let us all know your thoughts on the T-Virus, the zombies and BOWs in the comments section. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.